Hello everyone and welcome back to the Beware Cast. I hope you're all doing well and having an enjoyable summer so far. In this video we're going to be talking about and looking through Dougal Dixon's Green World. Now Dougal Dixon is a name that will be familiar to a lot of you who watch this channel because he is the man behind such classics as After Man, Man After Man and The New Dinosaurs and he also had a helping hand in the creation of The Future is Wild which is a very very cool documentary from 2004, I think. Green World is another Specevo speculative biology project of his. However, unlike all of the other ones that I've just mentioned, Green World was only ever released in Japan. And you can see here on the cover, we've got the Japanese katakana, I think that's called, the Japanese script. Um, and so this book I ordered from Japan. And I got it from uh, Amazon Japan, and as such, you know, obviously the whole book, as you can see, is all in Japanese, so I'm not able to read it just yet. However, I do plan to use Google Lens uh, as, a, as a mode of translation, so that I can hold my phone up to the book, it should translate the text, and I'll be able to read it. So we won't be doing any actual reading of it, really, just yet. We'll be going through the book, however, and looking at the illustrations, because there's a lot of really cool illustrations in here, done by Dougal Dixon, and also with some help from a Japanese artist whose name eludes me at the moment, I'm afraid, but I'll put it in the description so that you can look him up and, and uh, you know, see what you think of his stuff as well. So, yes, what we'll do is we will go through... Green World. We probably won't do the whole thing, to be honest, because it's quite. There's a lot to get through here. It's a it's a thickish book, but um, we'll we'll just go maybe go about halfway or maybe a third the way. We'll see how we do for time. I'll try and keep this video at around the sort of fifteen twenty minute mark, so I'm not taking up too much of your time. So first, what we'll do, we'll have a look on the outside. If any of you are fans of manga. Which is like a Japanese, uh, you know, comic book uh, type uh, books. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, anyone who has ever owned any of those or seen any will know that the spine on Japanese books is on the right-hand side, as opposed to the left-hand side. Uh, how it, it, which is how it is in obviously the uh, Anglosphere, the English-speaking world, the Western world, and obviously other places where you read left to right rather than right to left. So in Japan, spine is on the right-hand side. So the outer cover is quite cool, actually. It's quite minimalist, quite basic. It's um, green, which is quite apt, considering it's called Green World. It's got this... Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It's got this sort of uh, design on it which is sort of a clear, kind of gluey, gloopy stuff which is over it, which is quite cool. I wasn't sure to start with whether it was intentional or whether some bloke in Japan had just spilled glue over it, but it, I think it is, it is intentional. It's very, very nice. Uh, this is, it's got an outer dust jacket. Uh, the cover, hardcover itself, does have um, a little bit of a design on it, not uh, anything too intricate though saying that it does have this very nice very ornate little um symbol here i'm not quite sure what the significance of that is just yet it may explain it in the book later on or it may not it may just be there for decorative purposes either way it looks very cool and it's essentially the same thing on the spine as well and just totally blank on uh, this bit here so that back there so, yep, uh, comes with one of these uh, doodads, which is very cool because I'm always losing bookmarks. So when a book has one of these, it's very handy for somebody like me who's very careless. The inside here, it has sort of a rough texture here on, um, on the inner part of the hardback cover. Um, it's kind of cool. And it has a lot of names here. Now, my theory is that all of these names, which uh, they're not Japanese names, they're more... Uh, Western names, you know, you've got like uh, Timotheus Creer, which sort of sounds Greek, but 
I bet it doesn't. Uh, you got Safira Choi, Russell Choi. Uh, you know, uh, the, the Western sounding or European names. My theory is that these are the names of the colonists who go to Green World. I can't see any other reason for there being just a, a list of names like this, but yeah, I could be wrong. That's just my theory. A little bit of text there, I'm not sure what it says. I will translate that soon and let you know what it is. Here we've got what looks like sort of like a Stonehenge sort of structure here. It's got some smaller boulders surrounding it at the base. And a tall one there. I don't know whether that was already on Green World before the colonists got there or if it's something that humans uh, put there uh, later on. Here on the title page, this is very cool because, you know, you've got the space background there, the, the void. And here, this is, this must be Green World. And you've got the, the ocean, you've got some the land, cloud. You know, it's a very cool sort of introduction. We're, we're first getting there. That's obviously the first thing you're going to see when you arrive. There's some text here on a space background, a little bit of Green World there as well. Don't know what any of this says. I'm assuming it's a sort of introduction to the book, like a introductory chapter, or or it could be the uh, the thank yous by by the author. Here we have a world map of Green World, which is actually called Ascaris II. It's a very cool name. Um, I wonder what the significance of Ascaris is. I, I wonder if maybe it derives from the ancient Greek or the ancient Latin or something like that. I'll have to look that up because it does sound like a cool name. Here we've, like I said, we've got the world map. We've got the uh, the various continents. Looks like, it, you know, it's got lots and lots of smaller islands as well. Um, here and here and dotted about here and there, which is very cool. It looks like it's been split up, uh, this continent at least. Uh, and this one as well, into regions or countries maybe, administrative regions, I'm not sure exactly, but they're all labelled, so we'll find out what they're called when I hold up Google Lens to this. It's very cool, that, um, yeah, a cool bit of world building already, you know, it's got the, it's got the planet, we've got some different parts of it. Here we've got, let's see, so it looks like a sort of rock formation here in the in the background. We've got some flora sort of here and there, which is very cool. It's all it's all labeled. Again, uh, you know, it's all annotated. I don't know. Well, I think I think these are annotations. I'm not sure what they say, obviously, but we'll when we uh, get more stuck into it, we'll find out what a lot of this stuff means. Here, it looks like. This looks like an outline of maybe a, a pig-like creature, a hog-like creature. This kind of looks like a cave wall to me, so it could be a cave painting. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know why a colonist who have come from Earth, you know, obviously very technologically advanced, don't know why they're doing cave paintings unless this is something that they find and there's been uh, an intelligent sapient life form on green world before or, or there or there still is i don't know do not know so we've got a lot of text here obviously that's what the bulk of the book is going to be and i very much look forward to reading through a lot of this uh well all of it so right okay artemis uh huh. so she i don't know if artemis is her name, or if Artemis is the part of Green World that she is from, or lives on, what have you. She is on, now I know this creature that she's on is called a, I believe that's called a Strider, S-T-R-I-D-A. Uh, it's, it's a beast of burden used on Green World, like a, like a horse or a donkey or a, or a camel, but, but it's native to Ascaris to Green World. So, um... That's what they use. I like this image, actually, this illustration, rather, because it looks quite pulpy. Now, I don't know if any of you are fans of the old Weird Tales magazines. Um, 
you, you know, you, you have the uh, the old time writers. You know, you, you Robert E. Howard, your H. P. Lovecraft, uh, Clark Ashton Smith, people like that who wrote for those magazines. Their heyday was back in the sort of nineteen twenties, thirties, and forties and fifties, I think. Uh, though the popularity had started to wane a bit by that point, I think. Um, and the illustrations in those magazines would often look sort of similar to this, I think, or, or maybe not, but th that's just the picture that came into my head the first time I saw it. It's a very cool picture, so, you know, you've got some sort of fungal-looking flora down here. You've got some pinkish leaves. You've got a mountainous background. Yeah. Very some very cool stuff there. I'm looking forward to finding out what it's all about and what it's all called. Um, here it looks like we've got some. Now this looks like official documentation uh, in universe, probably detailing the various uh, flora and fauna that the colonists have come across during their travels across the planet, across Ascaris too. They've been noting everything down. We've got some diagrams here. Yeah, it uh, looks very interesting, very interesting. Okay, so here it looks like we've got the alphabet. I'm not sure what that's about. It's, it look, okay, so you've got, yeah, so we've got some um, corresponding terms here for the, for the letters. So here we've got A, Affle Rump, B, Blueback, C, Curly Whirl. Wasn't there a... Was there something called a curly whirl in After Man? That sounds familiar, to be honest. I'll, I'll have to have a look. But, uh, obviously, one of Dougal Dixon's favourite words is curly whirl. <laughs> um, yeah, so the rest of it is, you know, as I've said many, many times already, and probably will say many, many more times, the rest is in Japanese. So I don't know exactly what it says, but uh, K for quank. <laughs> Well, wow, okay. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll find we'll find out. We'll f oh my! Oh, of course. Look, it's got a creature for each one. Right. So, oh, it's so obvious. Okay, it's just dawned on me. So, juggalug. That must be a juggalug. Curly whirl. That's a curly whirl. Yeah. Okay. So the the letter is for each of these creatures whose name begins with that letter. Right. Cool. Mystery solved. Z, zero, and that's a ship. So it looks like maybe the ship they arrived on is called the Zero. Hmm, cool. Yeah, it's quite the animal kingdom on Green World here. I don't know if you can, you should be able to see it. I think it's quite, quite small, but uh, lovely design, like lovely, lovely, um, Lovely artwork in this book. Really nice. Really, really nice. And, uh, you know, people who have watched the channel for a little while will know that I was rather critical of the artwork in Man After Man. I found it very Uncanny Valley, and it grossed me out a lot of the time. But the artwork in this one is gorgeous. Really nice. Really vibrant colours. Beautifully done. Really intricate. Lovely. I love it already. And we are only, what, I don't know... Not many pages in, we're about that far in. Uh, so we've got, yeah, okay, so we've got a human comparison with some, with a creature here. Uh, 1A, 1B, 1C. Uh, and we got 1A, 1B. All right, so these must be the, the names of these creatures. I wonder how, you know, when it comes to the translation, I'm obviously just going to be using Google Lens. It'll probably give quite a literal translation, but a lot of these things have just got made up names. So how does that work for going from Japanese to to English? Uh, is it just going to be a load of random letters? Because because all this, it has to make sense to Japanese people primarily because it's in their language. Um, so I just wonder how a direct translation into English is going to work and whether it will work. Um, remains to be seen. Yeah, lots of cool looking. Yeah, I like this one. It's got some arms sort of coming out like that. That's really, really smart. I like that. It looks like it. Yeah, so that's its legs. Wonder if that's its face. Two A. Hmm. 
Hmm, interesting finding out. I like this. You've got colour variations on what looks like very similar creatures. I don't know whether it's um, like a sexual dimorphism thing or if they are just related species from the same family. Uh, we've got some more what looks like cave paintings to me, but they, I mean, they may not be cave paintings. It may just be a stylized kind of um, interpretation of things to come in the book, which just act, which just act as a chapter um, introductory page. We've got more text, more text. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. Hopefully I don't skip over any illustrations while I'm... I don't think I have, no. Right, so we've got a cool back, some cool backgrounds here. Uh, looks like we've got some, looks like handwritten, um, uh, you know, in English, ripe month. Bye-bye month, bye-bye month, right. Bye-bye month, ripe month. Fruit month, I think. Comeback month. So this must be, this must be the names of the seasons or something because um i guess the seasons will work differently on a different planet and you've got people who have gone there they stay there for a while their own terms for things come about they have a their own culture yeah so this must be what they i don't know yeah the, uh, well it, if they end in month then obviously they don't do january february march etc they must do come back month Fruit month for when different things happen. Yeah, it makes sense. Cooking month. Uh, falling month, I think that says. So that must be like autumn, fall uh, for the Americans. Yeah, cool. Very nice. A nice tree. You've got some, some more fungal looking uh, flora there. With a human comparison for the, for the size. So you can see how... See how big it is? Yeah, cool. That's quite nice. Nice uh, sort of cloud. It looks cloudy to me, like a cloudy sky. Blue and white background. All right, okay. Tame your own strider. Right. Contact the small step kraal of Rudy and Gert DeWitt. Hmm. So Rudy and Gert DeWitt, who are they? I guess they're brothers who run... Maybe they run the Strider Ranch or a Strider Farm, maybe. Tame your own Strider. Maybe it's like a, maybe that's where you go and get your Striders from. You know, like a tame, like a, a tame before you buy. That's, that's quite cool. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it shows you some people <laughs> pulling this poor thing apart. Not apart, but you know, they're pulling out. I guess that must be part of the taming process. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. More text, more text. Fully trained, yeah, right. Now, fully trained striders. Contact the small step kraal and... Is that livery or livery? I'm not sure. That's, uh... I'm, um... Not great at pron pronouncing words, to be honest. I think it's because I learn a lot of words from reading rather than hearing them being spoken, so that's, I tend to just uh, come up with my own pronunciation. Uh, Rudy DeWitt, so member of the Guild of Strider Riders. So just just Rudy DeWitt here. Not, I think it was Rudy and Gert before. Rudy and Gert DeWitt. Let's see, where, yeah. Uh, yes, Rudy and Gert DeWitt. But it's just Rudy on this bit. More cave painting looking stuff. Chapter page. Uh, text. Yep. Cool. Oh, right. That's, that's very colourful. I like that. That's uh, very, wow, that's so intricate. That's so detailed. And a lot of stuff on here, you're not quite sure if it's flora or fauna. Like some stuff, like this here, looks like it's got eyes. And they're on um, stalks. But you don't really know if they're if they <laughs> is it just a plant that looks like that to scare things away, scare predators away. Could be this one sort of looks like it's got fangs. Yeah, and this one looks like it's got eyes, definitely. But again, is it just a strange 
tree. Mind you, no, it looks like it's got hands. I think that's a living being, actually, like a, like a, like, a, like some sort of animal. And there's a person there as well, like a little, looks like a little girl. I wonder what that's all about. That's a very smart looking thing. It looks like a really colourful lizard bat-like creature. Wow, really, really smart. I really like that picture. That's That would be a really cool poster. That looks really good. Yeah. Uh, da, da, da. Equip your strider. Okay. Bedo supplies. Right, so this is an advertisement where, you, you know, you would purchase things like a, a saddle, I suppose you'd call it. I don't know if it's called a saddle for a strider in universe. I'm just, you, you know, you obviously you buy, use a saddle for a horse. What have you? These are the beasts of burden on Green World. You would, you know, and I guess you would also buy its food for it there. Uh, medical treatment, things like that. Just all round, all you know. Go to Bedo Supplies for all your Strider needs. Text, 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 text. All right, so these are like stick men. Drawn with crayon, so I'm guessing these are like, you know, a, a child has drawn these, like a child from Ascaris to, you know, one who was born there, and this is all they know. They they don't know anything about Earth animals from their planet of, uh, you know, a rich species origin. Um, they're drawing pictures of animals that they know on their planet, which obviously that makes sense, you know, they're... Kids uh, on Earth, they draw pictures of cats and dogs. On Green World, they draw pictures of striders and wherever these things are. Yeah. Ah, right. Cool. This is this is nice. You got a river here. Uh, of sort. Yeah, like a river. I wonder if it is water, like you know, water, like on our planet, or if it's uh, you know, does it have a different composition, chemical composition? If is it something completely different? Or, or mind you, they're colonists. They're probably terraforming the planet, aren't they? So this is this may just be uh, normal water. And if that's the case, this wouldn't be a river. It'd, it'd be a canal, I suppose, if they've um, dug this themselves. So they're certainly changing things to their liking. Yeah, lots of so little uh, bits, uh, little thingy bobs here. Lots of little creatures. Native creatures. We've got some stuff here of some people. Hmm, what are they doing there? Looks like they're using like staffs to pry up. Looks like a big shell of some sort, like a giant sort of like a big clamshell type type thing. Not exactly, but you know, sort of looks like that. Here they've grabbed all of some big long thing. Don't know if that's a plant or an animal. Uh, animal. Um, here there's that uh, looks like a a section of something, possibly a section of that. This looks like a fish-like creature. It looks like, I don't know if it is. And uh, and there's a man with a staff and a very big hat. And he's honestly, oh right, he's used the, he's wearing that as a hat. Well, wow. <laughs> okay. This looks like some sort of cave system. Yeah, you've got people there going down into like little, uh, little, cavern type things I guess exploring they've come across this thing wherever that is um hmm. yeah and you've got some more so you've got a big sort of kind of kind of looks like a butterfly type thing here I don't know there's a person there I don't know if that is like the size compared to people mind you you've got little ones here uh, so maybe this is just a close-up of these things just to just so we can see it properly, but it's more that sort of size when compared to a person. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, is that a strider? I think that kind of looks like it might be a strider without all the without all the gear on it. I'm not hundred percent sure to be honest, but looks cool. Sort of reminds me of a tarantula in a way. It's with its multiple limbs and multiple eyes, furry body, yeah, yeah. cool. Some... Yeah, so this looks like a flying creature. These all look like wings, which probably belong to 
similar kinds of creatures, I would I would guess. Yeah. So uh, well, we're getting on to about 25 minutes now, so I might... We made a good bit of progress there. We're almost halfway through, so I might... Let's see, if this is all text. We'll find one more cool uh, illustration to look at. And then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll call it a day for this video. Ah, right, cool. Yeah, that's, that's a good one to end on, actually. Yeah, that looks really smart, whatever it is. So, is that? No, I thought, I thought these were skulls for a minute. <laughs> I was going to say, that's a bit, uh, a bit, a bit grim and they're decorating something with skulls. But no, it just looks like some sort of, like a fungal, um, some sort of fungus which is being used to decorate this sort of thing. So we got like, looks like an onion shaped thing, like bulb shaped things. And, oh, you've definitely got some fungal type stuff up there, mushrooms, toadstool type things, local equivalent. A couple of little flying creatures in there. Um, some sort of Decorative, yeah, it's got a bow on it, so this must be some sort of decorative, um, like a like like a wreath or something, you know. It's um, it's obviously something that means something to the people on Ascaris too, because they made it. They made it to look like that specifically. Yeah, this looks really cool with the blue and the red. Yeah, that looks really smart. Whatever it is. I wonder if it's a headdress or something. It looks like a face should be poking out of this. You tie that under your chin. And you wear this as sort of a decorative, um, yeah, make yourself look cool. Headdress. That's my theory. I don't know if it actually is that or not. But, uh, hey, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll soon find out. Anyway, yeah, I think that's a good point to leave it at for now. Because we're at 27 minutes or so so ended up quite a long video but what we'll do is we'll come back to this i'll make a note of whereabouts i am oh, where's the page number right so page 184 so i'll make a note of 184 and then i'll make a part two of this series where we will look through the remaining uh pages of of green world volume one this is vol i should have said before but this is um, Green World Volume One. There's a Green World Volume Two as well. It's a, it's in two two parts. So this being Volume One, we'll leave it there for now. We'll continue with probably the rest of it for the next video, and then I'm going to have a proper read of it, and I'll talk about some of the species from within once I've got some more information on them, and I'll make a bunch of videos out of that. I plan on wringing Green World dry, to be honest. I'm going to make quite a few videos on it. So, yeah. This section for the next video. Then Volume 2. And we'll go through it and do uh, more videos. And we'll really, really get into... Um, really get into it and see what this is all about. Because at the moment, all I really know is the basics. It's colonists from Earth. They've gone to Ascaris 2. Put down roots and... There's a lot of crazy looking stuff there. Other than that, I'm a bit ignorant of uh, of the rest of it, what the story is and what have you. So, yeah, we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you are interested, then you can become a patron of mine or a member. Um, I have an unboxing video of this book there for members and patrons only. Uh, I also have the introductory chapter to my own Spec Evo book, which I am currently writing and creating artwork for, called The Telescope, A Study of Alien Worlds from Earth. So if you want to hear the first uh, short section of the opening chapter, it's about 15 minutes long, you can do that. It's read by myself. You can do that by becoming a member or a patron. And um, yeah, I'm going to be doing more exclusive stuff for members and patrons as well. So yeah, we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. And uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Thanks for watching the Beware Cast. 
If you enjoyed this video then please hit the like button along with the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of future uploads. Also, please feel free to leave a comment on this video with your thoughts and share it around with anyone who you think would find it interesting. I'd also like to encourage you to become a patron of mine on Patreon where, for as little as one pound, dollar or euro a month, you'll have access to exclusive bits and pieces from me such as sneak peeks of my own upcoming speculative biology book, The Telescope, a study of alien worlds from Earth. The introduction chapter of The Telescope is available on there now, read by myself, so if you want to check it out then just follow the link in the description. I would also like to thank my current members and patrons who could be seen here. This has been the Beware Cast, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.